Brian, what are you doing with that on your face? Matt, I've been trying to review Samsung's Gear Augmented Reality headset here, but I don't think it's working properly. Can you help me out? Brian, it's VR. It's a virtual reality headset. Anyway, have you read the manual yet? No, I can't read anything through this thing. I guess toss it over and I'll take a look later. All right, here, catch. Sometimes I think life was easier without a smartphone strapped to my face. Oh, hi, I'm Brian Jackson. Welcome to All Hands on Tech. This week, we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, and we're talking about using it in reality and less about what it offers in virtual reality. The user interface offers a lot. Samsung's TouchWiz UI is improved and will make even casual smartphone users happy. For those who want to customize their Android rig like they would modify a hot rod, there's lots of options for that too. You can change the core launcher on your Android, giving your device a whole different look and feel, like integration with Google Now services. But there's good reason to stick with Samsung's UI. After making about, I don't know, uh, 76 different Android devices, Samsung seems to have struck the right balance of tweaking Android without cluttering up the experience. The Edge model gives access to a special Edge UX feature that users of the plain Galaxy S7 don't get. This menu slides out from the side of the screen with the swipe of your thumb. You can use it to quickly launch an app, or in many cases, access a specific task in an app. Plus, you can launch a quick call or text message to your most often used contacts. A Yahoo News feature even offers the option to scroll through headlines. Third-party developers will soon be able to contribute their own edge panels, so we might see some interesting additions here. This is Samsung's flagship smartphone we're talking about. So you know the hardware is going to be top of the line. I won't delve into all of the specs, but know that this device will be able to smoothly handle just about any work you can throw at it. It's got the most recent Snapdragon chipset and four gigabytes of RAM. There's 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, plus you can expand that with a micro SD card slot, as much as 200 more gigs. There's tons of bells and whistles on this smartphone, like a fingerprint scanner, and the screen is really sharp with a quad HD display. One amazing feature of this phone is the water resistance. If you've ever ruined your smartphone from dropping it into a puddle, or worse, you'll appreciate that this device has a really good chance of surviving a bit of a soaking. If you have last year's Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge, there's probably not enough motivation to upgrade here. Yeah, the designs are slightly improved, the specs are a bit better, but I don't think it's enough to get more people to open up their wallets again. If you're trying to make the choice between the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge models, screen size might play a factor. You might prefer the smaller 5.1 inch S7, but know that the curved screen and backing on the Edge make it surprisingly easy to handle for such a large device. The only other major difference is access to the Edge UX productivity features. If you're buying these smartphones off contract, expect to pay $1,000 Canadian for the Galaxy S7 Edge. The plain Galaxy S7 is $900. They're available now. For ITBusiness.ca, I'm Brian Jackson. Thanks for watching All Hands on Tech. Hey man, thanks for checking out that Gear VR headset for me. Can I have a back now? Uh, Matt?